G'day everyone, it's Curtis here and welcome to an on the back wheel video. Today I'm reviewing the Aprilia Touareg 660 and we're going to answer some very important questions. Number one, is this a good adventure bike? Number two, would I own one? And number three, and perhaps the most important question, should you buy one? Let's get stuck in. Again. This is on Novies, by the way, TKC 80s. So this review is going to be split up into a few segments so you can jump between them all if you like. We're going to start off with the design and looks of the bike, then we're going to talk about the engine, next the suspension, then the handling, and then finally wrap it all up. Let's start off with the design and look of the bike. Look, I'm a bit mixed here. Uh, I've said it a few times, I much prefer the black colors, but you know, you're getting a bike for free to review. You can't exactly complain, can you? Look, it is a nice looking bike. It's just not, it's not gorgeous, you know what I mean? If I was to have one in black with a nice bash plate, a nice exhaust, and get rid of those pannier racks at the back and the rear rack, I think it'd be a pretty smart looking bike. Let's do a walk around of the bike and talk about things I like design-wise, things I don't like, and just have a general chat about the bike. We'll start with the front. I like the headlight, it looks trick. I like the wheels as well. You can see there's this different kind of spoke pattern on these, and they stick out. These things seem rock solid as well. Uh, this has the aftermarket touring screens. You can see it's a bit wider, and um, it's very nicely done how the indicators actually come through the screen. I like that look. One thing I don't like is the hand guards. These are the stock ones. Look, they're moving already. They're getting scratched up. And I actually broke the brake lever today purely because these are weak. No! I broke the lever. This surprisingly didn't break, but pushed in and snapped the end. This has the aftermarket crash bars on it. They are made by Aprilia. They are fantastic and rock solid. The paintwork, it does look great. I just don't think it suits the lines of this bike. Maybe if they put black here or something like that, or this was blue or well, I don't know, a bit more color matching, it would suit the lines of the bike. Coming around, you can see the bike does look reasonably low slung. It does have 240 mil of ground clearance, which is quite good. The seat, you can see it's very flat and contoured. I'd like the seat on this bike and how it's designed like that. It allows you to slide up the front and back easily when you're riding off-road or if you just want to be a bit more comfortable. Great feature on this. The exhaust is up nice and high and is out of the way for damage. Uh, that is great. I would still replace it just for sound and weight reasons and performance, but it's a great design how they put it up like that so it's not going to get damaged. The bash plate, you can see this is a stock kind of aluminium bash plate on it. It's thin and terrible. It's already pretty well damaged and buggered. The pannier racks are very good quality. These do not come stock on the bike, but I can say the quality of these is fantastic. Uh, I've had some crashes and they've held up great as well. The rear rim, I like it. It looks trick and it's actually quite easy to clean. That's one thing I will say, the whole bike is easy to clean and just wash and hose off. There's not too many nooks and crannies. I did a big off-road ride yesterday and you can see I just gave it a gurney and it's come up absolutely fantastic. One thing uh, to mention is if you have luggage and don't have the pannier racks, there isn't a lot of places to hook it up. You can try and hook it up to these kind of grab handles here. It's great that it does have grab handles. I like that, but there's not many places to hook up your luggage. If you've got some soft luggage, you can throw it around the side here and then hook it onto here. Overall, I think it is a good looking bike, just not great. In some instances, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. In some, I'm like, oh, it looks a bit meh. You know, I'm just being picky here. A lot of people love this color and it's not much more. I believe it's only about $300 more in Australia, which is good value. But overall, I definitely like the black color better than this. We're gonna do a zero to 100 test. It is an off-road setting, which is the most aggressive setting with ABS and traction control off, which is also your wheelie control. Let's see how we go. Let's 
talk about the engine. It's a 660cc parallel twin, putting that roughly 80 horsepower. And the easy way to wrap it up is it's an absolute peach. Why is it an absolute peach? There's power everywhere. It's torquey. It's got ample power for off-road. Could use a little bit more on the street at times. That's just me being picky, to be honest. The fueling is perfect. It's very rare that I say that about a bike. I'm very picky with fueling, especially on-off fueling. Uh, when you're riding off-road or in commuting and traffic or corners, on-off throttle really annoys me. In every riding mode, this is absolutely perfect. The only part I can pick on off-road is it's a tiny bit soft off idle, which has caused me to stall a little bit off-road. I think if I owned it, I would get used to that. It just, it needs a little bit more revs than you would think down low. And maybe I'm also getting used to the engine note, but yeah, I've found that I have stalled it a little bit just in technical riding, like enduro style riding, I've stalled it a bit. Otherwise, yeah, the engine is fantastic. It goes pretty hard, it's quick, but I wouldn't say fast. So every I ride, it, it puts a grin on my face because you roll it on, it's got this great intake sound. It sounds fantastic, this bike. And it's got this wave of torque, there's power everywhere. It's immediate, it's responsive. Yeah, the engine's great. <laughs> This engine's just so smooth and torquey. Just power everywhere you want it. So the bike has multiple engine maps. We've got individual, off-road, explore, and urban. On all of them, you can change the traction control settings, which is really easy to do. It's just a toggle that you can do on the fly. It's a fantastic system. Uh, only individual can you change everything on, though. You can change the engine braking, the engine map from most responsive to least responsive, it's all very easy to do. I found that uh, you would never use the least responsive, it's a bit of a waste of time, it's too doughy. It makes full power in all of the maps, but if you're off-road and wanna have some fun on the street, put it in the most aggressive map. Uh, if you just wanna cruise around, put it in number two, which is the second down. I find that's a really good compromise. One of the great things about the engine maps is like yesterday, I had a big day off-road. I was absolutely knackered. I put it in explore mode, which just puts everything in the middle and I just cruised on the way home. It softened the throttle for me. And I found being tired, I was just able to really relax and enjoy my ride home so that I had no worry about really riding the bike. The maps are fantastic. Let's talk about the clutch and gearbox. It's got a cable clutch and a six-speed gearbox. The clutch is great. Uh, it is a bit of a reach, so for those people with smaller hands, it could be a bit uncomfortable, and it's not adjustable. So be wary of that. The gearbox is faultless. If I really want to nitpick, maybe, maybe six gear is a smidgen too short. So if you're doing high speed cruising, you know, 80 miles per hour, something like that, which is 130 plus, it, could be a little bit short, but I'm really nitpicking there. First gear is nice and short for off-road and all the spacings are great and it is buttery smooth. Now this one does not have a quick shifter. I would definitely put the quick shifter on it. I mean, it's an extra few hundred dollars. You're already spending $22,000. What's an extra few hundred dollars on top? And they are great on the street and when you're blasting the fire trails. Overall, the gearbox and clutch are spot on. So let's talk about the suspension on the Aprilia Touareg. It's completely adjustable all around from compression, reload, and preload. And overall, it is very good. The suspension out of the box, I have been extremely happy with on the road and off-road. The only things I can really pick on is, it can be a little bit busy in the initial part of the stroke. So what I mean by busy is, this feels like there's a little bit of movement going on, a little bit more than there should be. I have been able to slow that down by setting the preload properly and backing out the rebound a little bit. The bike likes to be ridden fast and hard, both on and off-road. I find, especially off-road, if you're hitting 
jumps and hitting stuff hard. Big hits, it's absolutely fantastic and soaks them up so well, it feels great. If you wanna push this thing on the street, it is fantastic. It doesn't dive too much under brakes. You can really push this bike and feel comfortable doing it. So what I've done is I've added a bit of preload to it, both front and rear, to get that sag where it should be for my weight. I found before I did that, it was plush and soaked up all the bumps, fantastic off-road, but a little bit wallowy on the road. Now I've done that, uh, it sits a bit higher up in the stroke and feels much better on the road. However, off-road, it's lost a little bit of compliance on those smaller, sharp bumps uh, and little bumps, so it's a little bit like, uh, a little bit jarring. I think I could dial it out with some more tweaking, uh, but that's my experience so far. It handles the big jumps just so well. Like you can hit big jumps on this for, the, for this kind of bike. Don't mean I'm not like motocross bikes and it soaks them up. You hit big G outs and washouts. It just boom. Like you're going to stuff way quicker than you should be. You just hit it and plow through and this thing will do it. <laughs> One of the great things about adjustable suspension and the suspension on the Touareg, it's, it's got so much adjustability. Like on this, if you're a bit slower or you just wanna have a go on a cruisy ride off-road and soak up all the bumps, take a bit of uh, compression out, adjust your rebound and just cruise along. Or if you're like me, you like to ride a bit quicker and hit things a bit harder, this has got you covered as well. The suspension is very easy to adjust and one of the fantastic things on this is it has an external preload adjuster on the rear. So you can just dial it on or off like that. So if you have luggage or a pillion, just click it on or you wanna adjust it and set your sag like I did. Boom, 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 fantastic. Also up here, your compression is on one side and your rebound is on the other. All very easy to do in your preload, you just get a spanner boom, turn that right there and you can set it. It's all very well done and easy to use. Overall, the suspension on the Aprilia Touareg is very, very good out of the box. I'm extremely happy with it. It's not perfect, but as is, it's some of the best in the class. Let's talk about what I think is the Aprilia's best trait, and that is its handling. I don't know what it is that Aprilia do, but every Aprilia I have ridden handles fantastic. And this bike is no exception. It just manages to be light and flickable, yet also stable. And man, this thing rails corners. It's got TKC 80s on it, which are not great road tires. I mean, they're solid, they're more off-road bikes, but you can, boom, you can tip this thing in the corners and it holds the line great. The handling is great off-road. I mean, you can tackle single track on this. It, burns down fire roads, it destroys them. If you're doing tight and technical stuff, it's pretty good to a point. I mean, it is still 200 kilos, even though the weight centralization is fantastic. It feels really low down and just amazingly well balanced. It's still 200 kilos, all right? And it's not really designed to do that kind of work. So overall, <laughs> it is so hard to fault the handling. It is really good. You know, it's great for any bike, let alone an adventure bike. Maybe a tiny bit more ground clearance would be appreciated, but overall, mwah. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about some things I don't like about the bike. I've actually made a list and I'm gonna be honest, nearly all of these are nitpicking or easy to fix. We'll start with the handguards. Like every adventure bike, they're terrible, all right? Just replace them straight away. I don't know why they don't do a stock, but anyways, they're plastic, they're flexible. I mean, they're supposed to protect your hands and levers, all right, and these don't. I had a small off the other day, it pushed it in and snapped the lever. This is like ride ending stuff, guys, let alone if you have a big off and or your hand gets stuck and gets crushed in a tree. Hand guard is terrible, replace them. No! Broke the lever. This surprisingly didn't break, but pushed in and snapped the end. Ah. So this center stand doesn't come stock on a bike. It's an official Aprilia accessory. I can't stand it. When you're riding off-road, it bounces up and hits your swing arm, 
which is no good. So that's going to cause wear over time. And the thing is, you're hitting off-road, it also goes bang, hits the ground. And then I found out the other day that if you crash on a hill or something like that, and the bike slides, it activates the center stand. So then you're already struggling to pick up the bike. Then you've got this center stand to contend with as well. And it's so hard to move, guys, uh, when you're trying to lift 200 kilos. I don't like them. Also, the side stand hits it at times. It's just not a good design. I would look elsewhere if you're looking for center stands. So yes, this is my leg. It is here for a reason. And that's because yesterday I found it the hard way that this foot peg holder loves to dig into your calf if you crash or something like that. It really grips on there. You hit it with some weight or speed. It digs in and it hurts. Personally, I would remove these. Uh, I don't like having foot pegs on the rear. I never had a pillion passenger. If you do have a pillion and you want to do that every now and again, however you want to ride hard off road or something like that, you've got to contend with that, guys. It's not a sharp edge or anything, but it's just something to really whack into your leg. The stock bash plate. Guys, it is absolutely terrible. Replace it. It's a real piece of junk, and it's not going to protect your bike. So this is nitpicking, but it's something I noticed having a bike for a while now. We've got a black fuel tank makes it hard to see when you're filling it up and it's caused me to overfill it a few times then you get fuel everywhere i really like the seat however after a big day riding out of day i was absolutely knackered and sitting down on the way home on the big bumps it felt like i was bottoming out the cushion right here just here okay enough negativity let's go over the things i like uh, first on the list is fuel economy it's very good, surprisingly good. Uh, I've had the bike for I think 1400 kilometers and I've averaged 4.8 liters per hundred. That's including some very serious off-road riding, including places where I've been stuck. So I've been very impressed with the fuel economy. The brakes, oh, they are spot on, fantastic. And what is even better is the ABS. You can turn it off both front and rear. Then we have a setting it's got ABS settings one and two. Number one is like an off-road setting, so it gives you a bit more slip at the front if you want it on and turns off the rear. And probably one of the best features of the bike, you know, bar the handling engine and all that. <laughs> but something that other bikes don't do is when you turn the bike off and on, the ABS will stay off and it remembers all your settings. Fantastic, Aprilia, well done. The riding position is fantastic. The seat to bar to peg ratio is pretty well spot on, both standing and sitting. Uh, Off-road, I find standing on this completely comfortable. And another great thing, if you're shorter or taller, they do a tall seat and a shorter seat. And for shorter riders, this bike is very easy to touch on. The crash bars on this are very, very good. Yes, the price is eye-watering. However, there's some other aftermarket options out there that are very similar for cheaper. I crashed this bike multiple times and it will fall bang on these and it doesn't sustain a lot of damage. This bike crashes well. I know that's not something you usually consider, but if you're riding off road and you're pushing a bike, sometimes these things happen and this bike crashes very well. I think with a set of hand guards, crash bars and a good bash plate, this thing is pretty well adventure ready. The build quality on the bike is fantastic overall. The switch gear is high quality. The bars are high quality. I really like the dash. It's simple, clear, easy to use. They've done a great job with the dash. And the foot pegs are very good. They're so good, I would not change them to an aftermarket set of foot pegs. They're fantastic. One of the other things I like about this bike is it's fun. It's a very playful feeling bike. I know that's a stupid thing to say, it's a motorbike, but the engine wants to go, the suspension handles well, it turns and feels great, and it's just fun to ride on and off the road. Who should own it or should you buy one? Well, look, this is not a bike you should ride around the world. Well, look, you could, but it wouldn't be my first choice. This is perfect for someone who's commuting to and from work or you wanna to go to the cafe on the weekends, through the mountains, or send it off-road. This bike is absolutely perfect for that kind of riding. I think this is the pick of the bunch at the moment. It's cheaper than a KTM 890 Adventure R. It's a little bit more expensive than a Tenere 700. However, it is a much better bike. I have to say, I had an absolute blast having this bike for a month. 
it is a cracking motorcycle. Before you go, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps grow the channel and help me get more bikes like this to review. And check out my other content as well. I did some other cool videos on the Aprilia. All right, that's it from me, everyone. Keep it on the back wheel. Catches.